In the one saint century Mediterranean world, a vibrant drapery of religious beliefs and practices coexisted, among which Christianity emerged as a distinct and transformative movement. This period, marked by the Roman Empire's expansive reach, witnessed a rich intermingling of cultures and religions, with Greek paganism holding a prominent place in the societal and religious landscape. Amidst this bustling backdrop, the Apostle Paul appeared as a pivotal figure, whose missionary journeys and theological expositions played a crucial role in delineating Christianity from the surrounding Greek pagan traditions. Paul, a figure of profound historical and religious significance, embarked on a life-changing adventure that not only spread the Christian faith across the Roman Empire, but also established a clear demarcation between the burgeoning Christian community and the prevailing Greek pagan practices. His epistles and missionary endeavors emphasized the radical theological and ethical distinctions of Christianity, accentuating monotheism, a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and a moral code predicated on love, forgiveness, and communal care. This essay aims to explore the dynamic contrast between Christianity and Greek pagan religions during the Apostle Paul's time, delving into the theological beliefs, worship practices, ethical standards, and societal implications of these differences. Through this investigation, we aim to assert how Christianity's distinct identity not only shaped its own development, but also had lasting impacts on the religious and cultural fabric of the Western world. The examination of Paul's role in this historical and religious narrative reveals the enduring consequence of his contributions to the establishment and spread of Christianity, setting the stage for a deeper understanding of its unique position within the one saint century religious mural. In the active heiress of the one saint century Mediterranean world, a deep transformation was underway, etching a new path in the religious landscape. This period, demonstrated by the intersection of cultures and religions, was characterized by a lively exchange of ideas, beliefs, and practices. At the heart of this vital religious milieu stood the Apostle Paul, a figure whose contributions to the nascent Christian movement would prove to be both revolutionary and lasting. Paul's campaigns and writings did not merely introduce a new faith to diverse communities. They articulated a vision of Christianity that was distinctly set apart from the prevailing religious traditions of the time, most notably, Greek paganism. Greek pagan religions, with their abundant pantheon of gods and goddesses, were braided into the fiber of daily life, influencing everything from civic duties to personal ethics and social norms. These religions offered a worldview that was polytheistic, celebrating a multitude of divine figures, each with their own realms of influence, stories, and rituals. The Greek gods were imagined in the image of humans, possessing superhuman powers yet subject to human passions and weaknesses. This polytheistic framework provided a multifaceted comprehension of the cosmos, where divine favor could be sought through various rituals and sacrifices, and the afterlife was a shadowy realm, its nature dependent on one's deeds and the whims of the gods. Against this backdrop, Christianity arrived as a flare of monotheism, proclaiming one sovereign God who was omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent. Christianity offered a stark comparison to the Greek pantheon. This monotheistic belief was not slightly a theological assertion. It was a declaration of a universal truth that transcended local deities and cultic practices. Christianity's emphasis on a personal and direct relationship with God, salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, and the promise of eternal life for believers was revolutionary. These doctrines did not just differentiate Christianity from Greek paganism, they challenged the very foundations of the existing religious order. Paul's role in this transformational period was critical. As a missionary, theologian, and writer, he navigated the complex religious and cultural scenes of the Mediterranean, engaging with Jewish and Gentile communities alike. His epistles, part of the Christian New Testament, are a tribute to his serious theological insights, pastoral care, and abiding commitment to spreading the Christian gospel. Through his writings, Paul addressed the theological, ethical, and practical conclusions of the new faith, laying down the foundations for Christian doctrine and community life. His engagement with Greek paganism was nuanced, recognizing the deep spiritual yearnings of his contemporaries, while firmly highlighting the unique claims of Christianity. The introduction of Christianity into the Greco-Roman world was not hardly an addition to the religious marketplace. 
it was a metamorphic movement that confronted existing beliefs and practices. The Apostle Paul, as a central figure in this movement, played an indispensable role in articulating and spreading the Christian message. His legacy, as captured in the New Testament, continues to influence Christian thought and practice, indicating the abiding impact of his missionary and theological work. The distinctiveness of Christianity, as established through Paul's efforts, set the arena for its expansion and the eventual establishment of a new religious tradition that would weightily shape the course of Western history. Moreover, in the Dosser of Religious History, the worship practices and rituals of early Christianity and Greek paganism present a fascinating study in disparities, rooted deeply in the theological convictions and societal structures of the one saint century Mediterranean world. This survey delves into the center of these distinctions, pointing out the communal, scriptural, and ethical dimensions of Christian worship juxtaposed against the ritualistic, polytheistic, and hierarchical nature of Greek pagan ceremonies. Christianity, emerging in a world dominated by Greek pagan traditions, introduced worship practices that were revolutionary in their simplicity, inclusivity, and spiritual depth. Central to Christian worship was the gathering of believers in homes or synagogues, a practice that reflected the early Christian community's emphasis on equality and fellowship. Unlike the grandiose temples dedicated to the Greek gods, Christian worship spaces were modest focusing on the gathering of believers rather than the architectural splendor of the worship setting. This simplicity reiterated a fundamental theological assertion, God's omnipresence and accessibility to all believers, irrespective of social status or wealth. At the core of Christian worship was the reading and preaching of Scripture, a practice that distinguished it sharply from Greek pagan rituals. While Greek religion was characterized by an extensive pantheon and a plethora of myths, that offered moral and religious guidance, Christianity offered a unified narrative centered on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The scriptures provided not only the theological foundation for Christian beliefs, but also served as a moral compass, guiding believers in their daily lives. This emphasis on the Word of God repeated the accessibility of divine revelation to all believers, in distinction to the esoteric knowledge often associated with Greek pagan practices. Furthermore, the early Christian community distinguished itself through the celebration of the Eucharist, a ritual that commemorated Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. This act of breaking bread and sharing wine was a profound expression of community and unity, symbolizing the believer's participation in the body and blood of Christ. In contrast, Greek pagan rituals often involved animal sacrifices and offerings to various deities, acts that sought to appease the gods and secure their favor. The Eucharist, however, was an act of remembrance and gratitude, thinking about the Christian belief in a God who had already provided the ultimate sacrifice. In addition, Christian worship was characterized by its inclusivity and emphasis on ethical living. The early Christians' practice of welcoming all individuals, regardless of social status, gender, or ethnicity, into their community was radical in a society where religious and social hierarchies were acutely entrenched. This inclusivity was not only a theological statement about the universality of God's love, but also a practical expression of the Christian ethical imperatives of love, compassion, and justice. In contrast, Greek pagan religions often reinforced social hierarchies, with certain rituals and practices reserved for the elite or initiated. Further, the divergence between Christian and Greek pagan worship practices extended to their societal associations. While Greek paganism was intertwined with the political and social goods of city-states, often serving to reinforce the existing social order, Christianity posed an assertion to societal norms. The early Christians' refusal to participate in civic religions, their critique of social injustices, and their emphasis on a community defined by spiritual rather than social status were revolutionary. These practices not only set Christians apart from the surrounding society, but also attracted persecution and suspicion. In sum, the worship practices and rituals of early Christianity represented a deep departure from Greek pagan traditions, chewing the theological, ethical, and societal innovations of the Christian faith. Through its emphasis on scriptural reading, communal worship, the Eucharist, and ethical living, Christianity offered a transformative vision of religious practice that underlined personal faith, communal responsibility, and spiritual equality.
These distinctions not only contributed to the spread of Christianity in the Roman Empire, but also laid the foundation for the development of Western religious thought and practice. Besides, the ethical standards and community life of early Christianity, as established through the teachings of Jesus and propagated by figures like the Apostle Paul, feature a serious departure from both the prevailing Greco-Roman moral scenery and the ethical practices within Greek pagan religions. This divergence not only underscores the distinct identity of the Christian community, but also its revolutionary approach to ethics and social engagement. The textile of early Christian ethics was careened from threads of radical inclusivity, communal support, and a life-changing vision of moral living, which stood in blunt opposition to the hierarchical and ritualistic morality of Greek paganism. Additionally, at the core of early Christian ethics was the commandment to love God and neighbor, a principle that transcended the more transactional and appeasement-oriented ethics of Greek religion. This emphasis on love as the fulcrum of ethical behavior radically altered the moral expectations placed upon individuals, urging a shift from performing rituals to secure divine favor to embodying love, mercy, and forgiveness in interpersonal relations. The Apostle Paul in his epistles consistently accentuated this ethical revolution, articulating a vision of morality intensely rooted in the example of Christ, a morality predicated on sacrificial love, humility, and service to others, including one's enemies. Also, the early Christian community, as depicted in the Acts of the Apostles and Pauline letters, was characterized by a level of mutual aid, sharing of resources, and concern for the vulnerable that sharply varied with the surrounding society. The practice of sharing goods, supporting widows and orphans, and engaging in communal meals, for example the Lord's Supper, not only solidified the internal bonds of the Christian community, but also served as a tangible expression of its ethical engagements. This model of community life called for the prevailing social norms, offering a countercultural example of communal solidarity and care. Moreover, early Christianity's access to ethics and community life cogitated a radical inclusivity. Paul's declaration in Galatians that there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, was revolutionary. This stance asked for the passionately ingrained social hierarchies and divisions of the Greco-Roman world, proposing a new social ethic where all individuals, regardless of social status, gender, or ethnicity, were valued members of the community, equal before God. This inclusivity extended to the ethical treatment of women, slaves, and foreigners, setting early Christianity apart from the broader societal norms and even from the practices within Greek paganism, where hierarchy and exclusion were often the rule. Furthermore, another distinctive aspect of early Christian ethics was its way to persecution and suffering. Rather than seeking retribution or engaging in violent resistance, early Christians were encouraged to respond to hostility and injustice with patience, endurance, and forgiveness, following the example of Christ's own suffering. This ethic of non-retaliation and the embracing of suffering as a form of participation in Christ's own passion presented a simple ethical contrast to the honor and shame culture of the Greco-Roman world, where personal and collective retaliation were expected responses to insult and injury. In essence, the ethical standards and community life of early Christianity, as shaped by the teachings of Jesus and elaborated by Paul and other early Christian leaders, offered a weighty critique of the prevailing moral and social order of the Greco-Roman world, including Greek pagan religions. Through its emphasis on love, mutual aid, inclusivity, and a non-retaliatory response to persecution, early Christianity not only distinguished itself from its cultural and religious context, but also laid the foundation for a new moral vision that continues to influence ethical thought and practice to this day. Last but not least, the societal suggestions and reactions to the development and spread of Christianity, as led by figures such as the Apostle Paul, reveal a complicated curtain of cultural, religious, and political dynamics within the Roman Empire and beyond. This analysis aims to analyze the distinct interactions between the nascent Christian movement and the prevailing Greco-Roman culture, shedding light on the all-round claims and transformations instigated by the Christian faith. Christianity's introduction into the Greco-Roman world was met with a spectrum of reactions ranging from curiosity to hostility. The monotheistic stance of Christianity, 
asserting the worship of one god and the rejection of pagan idols, positioned it in utter contrast to the polytheistic religions predominant in the empire. This theological divergence was not only a matter of personal belief, but defied the very texture of societal norms and religious practices, including the imperial cult, which venerated the emperor as a god. The refusal of Christians to participate in these public rituals was perceived as atheism and a threat to the Pax Deorum, the peace of the gods, which was believed to sustain the Roman state. Further, the societal connotations of Christianity's growth were significant, leading to persecution under various Roman emperors. The Christians' steadfast refusal to worship the emperor and the Roman gods, combined with their denouncement of pagan practices, often resulted in accusations of superstition, atheism, and social discord. Persecutions, such as those under Nero or Diocletian, were partly motivated by the desire to reinforce imperial authority and unity through religious conformity. These persecutions, while brutal and tragic, paradoxically served to strengthen the resolve and cohesion of the Christian community, demonstrating the depth of their conviction and the power of their faith in the face of adversity. Despite opposition, Christianity's spread was facilitated by its ability to adapt and assimilate aspects of Greco-Roman culture while retaining its core theological tenets. The incorporation of Greek philosophical concepts into Christian theology by church fathers, such as Justin Martyr and Augustine, helped bridge the intellectual and cultural gap between Christian doctrine and Greco-Roman thought. This syncretism enabled a broader acceptance and awareness of Christianity within the intellectual and cultural milieu of the time. Besides, the eventual conversion of Emperor Constantine and the Edict of Milan in 313 AD signified a turning point, granting Christianity legal status and fostering its integration into the structure of Roman society. This not only altered the religious view, but also had profound indications for social policy, law, and culture, influencing the development of Western civilization. Christianity's emphasis on moral values such as charity, humility, and the sanctity of life introduced new social norms and ethical considerations that denounced existing practices, including slavery and the treatment of the poor and marginalized. In summation, the societal meanings and reactions to Christianity during its formative centuries highlight the transformational power of faith to impose, alter, and ultimately reshape the social, cultural, and political contours of the world. The resilience and adaptability of the Christian community, coupled with the universal appeal of its message, aided its growth from a persecuted sect to a major world religion. This expedition not only illuminates the surviving impact of Christianity on human history, but also considers the dynamic interplay between faith and society, indicating the capacity for religious beliefs to transcend cultural and temporal boundaries and affect deep societal change. In conclusion, in the impressive narrative of religious history, the rising and establishment of Christianity within the Greco-Roman world, particularly through the missionary examinations and theological contributions of the Apostle Paul, represents a climactic epic characterized by serious transformations in theological belief, worship practices, ethical standards, and societal structures. This essay has traversed the changing interplay between early Christianity and Greek pagan religions, unveiling the absolute differences in monotheism versus polytheism, communal worship versus ritualistic ceremonies, ethical imperatives of love and justice versus hierarchical and civic virtues, and the societal overtones of a faith that tested the status quo and paved the way for a new moral and spiritual landscape. Additionally, the enduring gravity of these differences extends beyond the historical and theological into the very fabric of Western civilization, influencing concepts of law, human rights, and social welfare. Christianity's rise from a persecuted sect to a dominant world religion points out not only the metamorphic power of its message, but also the universal human longing for connection, meaning, and redemption that transcends cultural and temporal boundaries. Thus, Paul's legacy, as a tentmaker, theologian, and missionary, embodies the essence of this transformative odyssey, a proof to the enduring impact of faith, conviction, and the power of the gospel to reshape lives and societies. As we contemplate on the historical trajectory of Christianity and its foundational differences with Greek paganism, 
we are reminded of the intricate drapery of human belief and the thorough ways in which a message of hope, love, and salvation can cross through centuries, continuing to inspire and try us in our quest for grasp and transcendence.